A reading from the Ecclesial Crisis in Ukraine and its Solution According to the Sacred Canons by the Metropolitan of Kikos and Tilleria, Nikiforos. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us. Amen. The Interruption of Eucharistic Communion Between Orthodox Churches There is another issue that we should not fail to clarify, the issue of the interruption of Eucharistic communion between two Orthodox churches. Some accuse the Patriarchate of Moscow of having broken Eucharistic communion with the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople, and later with the churches of Greece and Alexandria, or at least with those of their bishops who received and concelebrated with clergy of the schismatic groups of the Ukrainian Church, in a hasty and theologically impermissible manner. These recent critics of the Patriarchate of Moscow forget, or would like to forget, that the leading master of this method is Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew himself. We should never forget that pompous ceremony at the Fanar, televised worldwide, where the Ecumenical Patriarch and many metropolitans of the Ecumenical throne imposed a penalty of akoinasia, being forbidden from receiving communion, upon his beatitude Archbishop Christodoulos of Athens and all Greece. This was all because his beatitude dared to convene the hierarchy of the Church of Greece, which elected, without patriarchal decree, three new metropolitans to epochies of the so-called New Lands. The New Lands are the new territories that were annexed to the Kingdom of Greece following the Balkans' wars on the basis of the July 28, 1913 Treaty of Bucharest. They were called New Countries in contrast to the Old territories which belonged to Greece prior to the Balkans' war. These new territories are Macedonia, parts of Epirus, the islands of the northern and eastern Aegean, Thassos, Samothraki, Lemnos, Lesbos, Chios, Samos, Inikaria, and Crete. After the Asia Minor catastrophe and the new tragic situation created and finalised by the 1923 Treaty of Lausanne, the Turks decided to issue the notorious December 6, 1923 Tezkir of the Municipality of Istanbul, which stipulated that from then on both the Patriarch and the members of the Patriarchal Synod must be Turkish nationals and serve on Turkish territory. Moreover, According to the Tezkir, the metropolitans of the new lands could no longer participate in the synod or on synodal councils of the ecumenical patriarchate. In order to avoid undesirable developments, such as potential schismatic activity by the metropolitans of the new lands, the ecumenical patriarchate was forced to resolve the issue with the Patriarchal and Synodical Act of 1928. The Act conditionally and Epithropikos, in trust, transferred the administration of the 26 metropoles of the new lands and the election of their metropolitans to the Church of Greece, thus ensuring their participation in the Synod of the Church of Greece. Indeed, at this time, any of the, did any of the primates or other hierarchs condemn this action against his beatitude Archbishop Christodoulos? Was that not a case of suspending Eucharistic communion, not for reasons of faith or dogma, but for reasons of authority and jurisdiction? Why was there such indifference then? Why is there such sensitivity now? Let us also not forget the Ecumenical Patriarchate's temporary suspension of Eucharistic communion with the Patriarchate of Jerusalem, or overlook the unfortunate ongoing Eucharistic suspension between the Patriarchates of Antioch and Jerusalem. We all agree that the nature and essence of the Orthodox Church in its fullness is participation in Eucharistic communion. We can also agree that the sacrament of the Divine Eucharist and shared participation in it expresses the visible unity of the body of the Church and constitutes the culmination of communion of brother with brother. The Divine Eucharist, this greatest mystery of mysteries, must therefore remain, as much as possible, removed from any ecclesiastical dispute which is not primarily regarding dogmatic issues or issues of faith in general. 
However, when the holy canons are violated, and a deviation from timeless ecclesiastical to canonical practice and tradition is observed, a suspension of Eucharistic communion must be imposed until the reasons that necessitated it are removed. The Orthodox Patriarchate of Moscow suspended Eucharistic communion with the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople on account of the latter's violation of the Holy Canons. As we have demonstrated above, the Ecumenical Patriarch's unilateral intervention in the Church of Ukraine, which is not his canonical territory, culminated in the anti-canonical grant of a tome of autocephaly to schismatic groups in that country. The Patriarchate of Moscow also suspended communion with the Orthodox Churches of Greece and Alexandria because they officially recognized the anti-canonical actions of the Ecumenical Patriarchate in accepting the unrepentant Ukrainian schismatics into communion. So the unity of the primates was not divided for petty and ethno-phyletic reasons, nor was the commemoration of the Ecumenical Patriarch suspended due to secondary trivialities, as some suggest. Both were done for reasons of legal and canonical ethics of conduct. One of the basic principles of the canon law of the Orthodox Church is that if someone receives an excommunicated individual into Eucharistic communion, then he himself is excommunicated. The sacred canons condemn those who receive deposed or excommunicated individuals into prayerful communion or concelebrate with them. Apostolic Canon 10 stipulates, quote, If someone prays together with an excommunicated person, even at home, let him be cast out. Unquote. Likewise, Apostolic Canon 11 stipulates, quote, If someone prays with a deposed member of the clergy, as though he is a member of the clergy, let him too be deposed. Unquote. Additionally, Canon 5 of the First Ecumenical Council notes that quote, those who have been cast out by some may not be readmitted by others. Unquote. Lastly, Canon 2 of the Council of Antioch stresses that quote, if a bishop, presbyter, deacon, or any one of the canons or any one of the canon is found to communicate with excommunicated persons, he too is excommunicated as having confounded the canon of the church. Unquote. Therefore, quote, any bishop, presbyter, or deacon who willingly communed with such excommunicated persons, whether at home or at church, at church himself becomes excommunicated by the others for what he does violates and confounds the canons of the Church appointed in this regard, namely Apostolic Canons 10 and 11, unquote. These are the holy canons which required the Orthodox Patriarchate of Moscow to suspend Eucharistic communion with the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople, the primates of the Orthodox Churches of Greece and Alexandria, and all those hierarchs who received representatives of the Ukrainian schismatics into communion. Therefore, the Orthodox Patriarchate of Moscow's decision to suspend Eucharistic communion with the three aforementioned churches is correct and justified, because it is ground grounded in the Holy Canons and in accordance with ecclesiastical practice through the ages. Glory be to our God, to him also be honour and dominion, always now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Jordanville Readings is produced and distributed by Holy Trinity Publications in Jordanville, New York. All rights reserved. For more information about today's reading and our full list of publications, please see the show notes or visit holytrinitypublications.com. If you are able, please support this podcast and our wider publishing work with a monthly pledge at patreon.com slash holytrinity.